Hello, welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video, we're going to be creating our own font. We're also going to be using FontForge to finish it off. And I'm going to run you right through the whole process of creating your glyphs or characters to turning it into a true type font. Stick with us. So the first thing we need to do to create our font is open our template that we created in the last video. If you didn't watch the last video, then click on the link in the top right hand corner, follow that through first and you can make yourself a template that's suitable for transferring from Inkscape to FontForge. So to open our template, we're going to come up to File, we're going to come down to New from Template and down here we've got our FontForge typography template. So we'll click on that, Create from Template, if we just move that up a touch. So I've just put a few letters onto our template just so we can see what the different heights are for. We've got the baseline, which is where all the letters sit. We've got descenders at the bottom, which is where letters with a tail hang down to. We've got X height, which is just the height of lowercase letters. We've got caps, which is for our capital letters. And we've got ascenders, which is for the tall letters like H. When we create our characters or glyphs, there's a few elements that we need to include. Uh, we've got the width of our character, which always starts at this, this front uh, guideline, that's the start of our character. And before that, we need a little bit of spacing, which is the 40 pixels that we set up when we made our template. So that gives us the spacing on the left hand side. And when we set our advance, which I'm going to go through shortly, that will set the spacing on the right hand side. So our advance is the width of our character, including the front bearing and the rear bearing. So that said, let's get on and make ourselves a font. So I've just got rid of our dialog boxes so we can start from scratch. So the two main dialog boxes that we're going to need are we're going to need layers. So we're going to click on our layers button up here and we need our SVG font editor. So if we come up to text down to SVG font editor, click on that one and we've got everything we need to get going. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to use a calligraphy pen to write out the letters. So it won't be anything fancy, but we can run through the whole process of creating a font and you can see how everything works. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new layer for each letter that we create or each glyph. So a glyph is just another term for a character. So if we start with our layer one, we can rename this A and we can use that for our lowercase a. And then for every letter that we want to create, we're going to create a new layer. So we start with layer A. We're going to come over, grab the calligraphy pen and I'm just going to draw out a letter A. So we want to try and stay roughly within this, this box. So there's our A. The next thing we want to do is union it all together. So we're going to grab our selection tool. I'm going to drag over the top of it and I'm just going to come up to path and down to union to turn it into a solid shape. I'm just going to tweak that a little bit. So I'm just going to bring that, that side in so it matches up better with our box. So that's our first letter. So I'm going to make a few letters first, I think. So next thing we're going to do is just come over. We're going to come back to layers. We're going to come down to the bottom and we're going to click on the plus symbol to add a new layer. So we can call this one B and press add. Now we want to hide the layers we're not currently using. So if we come up to the eyeball on our on our first layer, we can click on that to toggle the visibility and that will just hide the layer containing our A. So making sure our layer B is highlighted, we can draw a letter B. So I'm going to come over, grab our calligraphy pen and then we want the ascender line. So we're just going to come up here, come down and make a B. Same again, we're going to union these together. So drag a box over the whole lot then we can come up to path down to union to create a solid shape. So with that done, we can deselect it. We can come over, add another layer. So if I continue on like this, I'm just going to continue on, make a few more letters and then I'll get back to you. So I've just gone through and created a few more glyphs and we've put them all in their own individual layers. I've unioned them together so they're, they're one single path. So what we need to do now is go over to our SVG font editor. So in here we've got a few things we need to set up. First thing we need to do is create a font. So to create a font we can just come down and click on the new down the bottom here and that creates our font, font1. Now this is more of a file name, so we can just leave this one. So to work on any font, you need to make sure it's selected. So we're going to select font1. 
So if we come over to global settings, the first one we got in here is uh, horizontal advance X. Now this is the width of our character plus a bit of spacing on each side. So this sets our standard glyph size. So to make this up, we need a little bit of spacing at the front. I've used 40 pixels. Then we need the width of our character. I've set these lines 500 apart. And then we need some extra space on the back. So all in all, our glyph's going to come to 630. So I want to put 630 pixels in here. And that would just be our standard width. So the next thing we need to change is family name. The family name is the name of our font. So if we come over to our text tool, the fonts that you get up at the top here, this is, this is where our name is going to appear. So when we create our family name, this is what's going to appear in this list. So if we come back over here, we can just call this CFF, create the free font. So in here, that's all we need to do. So we've created a font. We've set our standard uh, horizontal width for our character plus the spacing, and we've given it a name. So next we need to move on to our glyphs tab. So we move over to our glyphs tab. We need to create a glyph for every letter we're making. So to get started, we're just going to come down to the bottom here and click on add glyph. So this adds our first glyph. We're going to use this for lowercase a. So we're going to come up and we're going to rename the glyph and I'm just going to call it a, lowercase a. Match string is what we type to make the uh, letter appear or the glyph appear when we're typing things out. So in here, we need to call this A as well. Advance at the end, where we set in our global settings, we've, we've already set this horizontal advance X, which is our standard size. If our letter and spacing is going to be different to this, then we can correct it by sticking a new advance value in here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come over and we need to, with our selection tool, we need to select the path that we want to use. So we select our letter A. We're then going to come over, make sure our font is selected, make sure the glyph is selected, and then we're going to come down and we're going to get curves from selection. And that will add our letter A to our glyph. So now we can test this, but if we come in here, type the letter A and we can see we've got an A there. And if we type our A's, we can see that we've set our spacing quite well. They look nicely spaced. So everything's hunky-dory. So next thing we need to do is add another glyph. So we come down, add a glyph. We need to match string to be B. Then we're gonna come into our layers. We're gonna hide our A. We're going to make our B visible. We're going to click off because we still got that A selected. We're going to select our B and we can come back into our SVG font editor, making sure the font selected, making sure the glyph is selected. We can come down to the bottom and we can put get curves from selection. Now when we type B, we've got our B down the bottom. So we're just going to carry on doing this for each of our letters. So I've gone through and I've created a few glyphs for us to work with. The next thing we need to do is make sure that all our spacing is correct. So if we come down to the bottom to our preview text, we can just type in a few letters. So our first lot of letters looks fine, A, B, C, D, E. There's a bit of a gap around the F, so we might adjust that slightly. So I'm going to get rid of some of these letters. So we just try the F with the, with the H. And that doesn't look too badly spaced. It could do have been a little bit smaller. So we may perhaps make the F slightly smaller gap afterwards. The I and the number one both have large gaps. We, we need to fix that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to come up to our layers. We start with the I. We select our I layer. We hide our G. We make our I visible. So our I doesn't fill our 500 pixel space. So we need to work out how wide our eye is, and then we need to calculate with the spacing either side. So we're going to have 40 pixels at the front, and we're using 90 pixels behind to work out what to put in our advance. So we're going to start by clicking on our path. If we look up at the top, we've got this width box. 
So we can see that it's uh, 89.101 pixels wide, basically 90 pixels. So if we add 130 for our spacing, which is the 40 that we're going to have at spacing at the front and the 90 that we have spaced behind, which will give us 220. So if we come back to our SVG editor, come down, select our iGlyph, and then we can come over to Advance. And in here, we need to put 220, press Enter, and it's corrected our spacing. So we can do the same with the number one. So we come back into layers, we come up to I, we hide that, we make the number one visible, we click off, we click on our number one, see how wide it is. At the top we've got a width, 183, so we we just say 180, plus the 130 equals 310. So we can go back to our SVG font editor, go down to the number one, and we can change that to 310. So the other ones that we might have a problem with are likely to be the capitals. So if we come back over to our SVG font editor, capital A, capital B, and capital C, and straight away we can see that these are gonna need adjusting. So if we start with a capital A, so we come over to layers, we select our capital A, make it visible, hide our number one, and we can come over, select our path, and then we can come up to the top and look at the width. So we're 750 wide. So 750 plus 130 equals 880. So we can come back into our SVG font editor, down to A, and we can change that to 880. And that corrects our spacing. So we can do the same with B and C. So are those done? I've also just taken off uh, 20 pixels off of F to space that a little bit better. So now we've gone through and spaced all our letters correctly, you're still likely to find pairs of letters that just don't seem to sit well together. And we can adjust the spacing of individual pairs by using kerning. So an example might be FA seem to sit quite far apart. So what we can do is we can come up to our kerning tab, click on kerning, and then we can stick in the first glyph. Oh, we've got to select our font, select the first glyph, we want F, select the second glyph, we want A, and then we can add a pair. Now we've got the pair, we can select the pair and we can adjust the spacing between the letters so we can bring them closer together until we, we decide that they look right. Another pair of letters that spacing might look a little bit off is F and a capital A. So we could come up to the top, we could come down, select our F for the first glyph, come to the second glyph and select A. We can add the pair, we can select the pair and again, it looked quite wide apart, so we can just reduce the space in between them until we're happy with it. And job done. So once we're happy with all the spacing of our letters, another thing we could look at is something called ligatures. In certain fonts, when you type a combination of letters, they actually produce a special glyph that combines the two letters together. A pair of letters that's quite often turned into a glyph is F and I. So we can do a similar thing working with our fonts. If we come up to layers, we can create a new layer, we're going to make an FI glyph. So I'm going to put F and then you want to put underscore and then I. By naming it this way, it helps when we move into FontForge for our glyph to work correctly. So we're going to add that. So now we're going to hide our C. We're going to come over, get our calligraphy pen, and then we can make our FI glyph combination. Grab our selection tool, drag over the whole lot, and we can go up to path and press union. So with that done, we need to go over to our SVG font editor. We're gonna come back to glyphs. We're gonna add a glyph, scroll down to the bottom. We're gonna change the glyph's name to F underscore I. We're gonna change the match string to F underscore I. Then we're gonna select our glyph and making sure that the font selected, the glyph selected, and our path are selected, we can go down to get curves from selection. And that'll add our ligature path to our FI glyph. So unfortunately we can't check this one, but later on when we get into FontForge, we can test it out. So using this same principle, we could create a way of bringing up um, stylized letters. So for example, if you wanted a Y with a long tail, we could do it the same way. So we could come up to our layers, we hide our FI glyph, we add another layer. And this time, because we want to bring up this um, 
this Y with a long tail. We need a combination of letters and numbers to use to call it up. So I'm going to put call it uh, Y underscore Y underscore one. So whenever we type Y Y one, it will pop up our new glyph. So we're going to add that. We're going to create our glyph. So we're going to come over and grab the calligraphy pen. And then we can just draw out a Y with a long tail. Then we can come up and grab our selection tool. And we can come over to path, down to union, and union it all together. So once we've done that, we can come over to our SVG font editor. We can add a glyph. We can rename the glyph. So we want it to be Y underscore Y underscore one. We need to do the same for the match string. Y underscore Y underscore one. And we can, with our font selected, and with our glyph selected, with our path selected, we can come over to get curve from selection, click on that. And now we've added that to our new glyph combination, if you like. So once you're happy with everything you've done, we've created this special character. We've created a ligature for F and I. Uh, we've corrected all the spacing, all of our different letters. Then the last thing we need to do is save this file. So I'm going to come up to file, down to save as, and we can just call this create the free font. And I'm also going to change the save as type. So we'll change it from Inkscape SVG to a plain SVG. And then we click save. So that's everything we need to do in Inkscape for the moment. So the next thing we need to do is get ourselves a copy of FontForge. So if we come over to fontforge.org, we can download a free copy of FontForge. So in here, we can just go to Windows install. Consider subscribing uh, to the mailing list. We can just confirm and download. And we can download the latest version. I'm not going to do this because I've already done it. So I'm just going to come over. I'm going to open up FontForge. And in here, it asks you to open a font. So we just need to find our font. Mine was on the desktop. Create a free font. So we're going to click on that to open it up. And it opens it up in the editor. So now you've got it open, you can go in and look at your individual letters and correct them. So if we double click on the A, so in here you'll find you can change your letters about much, much the same as you can in Inkscape. You can adjust the spacing. So if you wanted less spacing or more spacing, we can drag the A backwards and forwards towards our spacing bar. So we can bring it a bit closer there. And the same at the back, we can drag this back spacing out we will bring it forwards. And when you're happy with it, you can just close it down. One that was a little bit spacious was the F, wasn't it? So if we open up the F, so we could drag that in a bit if we wanted to. So the next thing I want to do is just see how our letters look. So I'm going to come up to metrics and down to new metrics window. And that pops us open a metrics window in here. It's much the same as our preview text. We can come in and we can write letters, see what they look like. If we try FI, it still doesn't create a ligature. So we get rid of that window for a minute. We're going to come over to our FI glyph. We're going to right click. We're going to come down to glyph information or glyph info. We've got our name correct. So F underscore I. So we can leave that. The next thing I want to do is come down on the left hand side to ligatures. Now in here, we want our source glyph names just to be F space I. So what I want to do is just delete out this center section. And now if we OK it, we can come up to our metrics window. We'll delete that and we'll try F I. And as you can see, it corrects it now to our special glyph. So our F still works, our I still works. But if we do the combination of FI, it converts it to the new glyph. So that's our FI ligature sorted, but we want to sort out our special character as well. So if we right click on this one, we come down to glyph information. Um, in the Unicode, we can see it's all set correct. Y underscore Y underscore one. So we come back to our ligatures and again, we've got this, this extra information in our source glyph name. 
we just need to remove all that. So it's Y space, Y space one. Click OK. Now if we get our metrics window, we can do our A, we can do our FI glyph, and if we put in Y, Y, one, it converts it to our glyph with the long tail. So we've also got our special glyph now. So now we've got everything we want. We've got our ligature working. We've got our special character working. We've all got all our letters spaced correctly. Next thing I'm going to do is, is generate the font. So I'm going to come up to file, down to generate font. Uh, in here we can just name our font. So we just call it um, CFF font. We keep it as a true type font. You have got an option down here to validate before saving. This will show you any errors that are wrong with your font. We press generate and see what it does. So we've got different errors in here. Uh, self intersection. So we must have a glyph that intersects itself. Um, wrong direction. That's to do with the outside subpath has to go in one direction and any holes within that path, so like in this G, the subpath on the inside will have to go in the opposite direction. So we've obviously got some around the wrong way, missing points and extrema, non-integer coordinates. So going through and correcting all these errors is going to be outside the scope of this video. I've included a link below if you go down to the description that will tell you exactly what all these errors are so you can go about correcting them. Now I know because I've tried it that our font is going to work fine. So I'm just going to generate the font. So I'm going to press generate. And that's going to have generated our font. Shrink that one down. We shrink this down and we're going to go in and we're going to open up our font. So CFF font, we double click on there. So as you can see, we've created our font. Any letters or characters that we haven't created ourselves will be filled in with the default font. So we can install this onto our computer by clicking on the install. Once it's installed, we can get rid of that. We can come into Inkscape. We need to shut Inkscape down. Now, if we reopen Inkscape, it should have installed our font. So we can create new document. So now I've got a document open. We can come over and we can grab our text tool. We can come up to our fonts at the top. If we click on the drop down menu, we can go down and somewhere down here, we should have our font. There it is. So CFF font. So we can click on this. I just zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing and we can type in our font. So ABC, we could try our ligature. So we could try the FI and that works fine converts it into a ligature in its own right. We could try our special character. So we could go Y, Y, one, and that converts it to our special character. So that's how you can make a basic font with Inkscape. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.